Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. In this video, I'm just going to give you another quick update that's two in one day. Uh, this is a programmer that I got recently. It's a GQ4X. Uh, it's a Willem programmer by mcumall.com. And what it does is you, you put EPROMs into here, you lock it down, and then you use the computer software to kind of uh, flash the code that you want onto that. And before you do that, and I'll show you on my little workstation here, you have to erase them in this EPROM eraser. Basically all it is is a cheap uh, UV light that goes on. You can see my hand now has a light on it. And you have a little timer and you can set it for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 minutes. Um, I had a little trouble with these here because these EPROMs are just really stubborn. <laughs> I believe it's the, uh, let me look here. Yeah, it's a 27C 1000 chips, and uh, these are NEC chips, and they were just a little tough to erase. I don't know if they're because they were old, or just that's how they are. But I did order um, some new ones on eBay. They came straight from China, and they work great, but I only had five of them instead of eight. So um, I managed to get a couple of these to work, but then I said it's not worth the hassle. I'm just going to wait. So I actually have five more on their way. The guy was supposed to give me ten. He just screwed up the order. So I'm waiting for those. Um, so basically you change eight chips out. You changed um, this here. This is the processor that's in there. It's actually equivalent to this one over here. Um, let me just get the model number for you. It's uh, MC68000P12. And I have a spare over here as well. And then this here is the original processor uh, which was in there. And if you peel it back, it's a 517... Does it look like? Oh, I can't read. 3170056. If you peel it open, it's glued on, you'll see that it has a battery in there that actually keeps the code alive. So when this battery dies, yep, you guessed it, the code dies with it. It's a security chip that Sega used to copy or protect stuff to prevent bootlegging. Um, you can't, it's not like the Capcom boards where you can disconnect it and then like you have an hour. This is like as soon as you disconnect it, poof, gone. So in order to replace this if you wanted to, if it's still alive, in this case mine was dead, uh, you have to take another battery, solder it onto the same terminals, and then unsolder the other battery so it has constant power the whole time. So a little bit of a pain, but uh, there's a fix now. So what you do is you pull this chip out, replace it with one of these processors here, uh, or the CPUs I should say, and then you swap out a couple of the chips with modified code that doesn't look for that copy protection. So it bypasses everything. So these are, I believe, Japanese versions of the game uh, because in Japan they did not have this chip on their boards. It was um, didn't have that battery issue and stuff. Just the U.S. version did. Uh, so what I did was I flashed these two, which should make the game work with this processor. Um, and then, however, you get... Uh, graphical glitches here and there they're not really noticeable but you can see them if you're really I guess into the game and of course I want it to be arcade perfect so you have to flash a few of the ROMs to the Japanese version completely and there's eight chips totally you got to do plus this swap out and then you're good to go however I don't have those extra chips to do it I already started the whole project then I realized after it that they actually have a patch for the US version where all you have to do is flash these two to the unencrypted versions uh, where it doesn't look for the code and you're good to go, all the US ROMs work. But since I had already started doing it, I was like, ah, let me go ahead and do the Japanese version first and I'll see if it works. And if it doesn't or something, or it's not what I want it to be or something like that, I may just go ahead and pull them back out. I have all the originals here, pop them back in and then just flash these two and be done with it. I'm actually tempted to do it now since I'm waiting for those chips, but I figured if I already did the work, it's nice and neat. Let me leave it, and if it works, it works. Great. I'm not really sure if this is going to solve my problem uh, for that because, I mean, the screen comes up white, and that's usually the symptom for a, uh, a suicided board, but I figured I'd let me try the resurrection and uh, see if it works. So there you have it. Um, I didn't really do any soldering. This board was actually really nice and clean. Uh, so, you know, I out it's something with the board I mean I tried changing out the power supply just to see if it would correct the problem um, but again you know I still have to do everything just to make sure I'm not getting any sound it's not playing blind 
Uh, the monitor does turn on and the monitor was hooked up to another PCB and it works fine. So not really sure what's going on with that thing. There's uh, a couple other boards in there like amplifier boards and uh, whatnot. So uh, yeah, so that's it. So we're going to give you a quick update. And as you can see over here, it's kind of a uh, little uh, teaser here. These are the old caps for that Toei monitor. I already started capping it. You can see here's one of the uh, <coughs> parts that I also that I discovered were bad. So uh, it was actually the wrong part in there. That may have just taken out a lot of the board. So yeah, so here's my cap kit. Bob Roberts. Whoops, you can see caps falling out. So that's it. And uh, I'll get to that at a later date and maybe have a video on that and how I repaired the board. And uh, that's it. So hope you guys like this little update on the Sega 16X board. Or sorry, System 16 board from the Thunderblade. Again, if you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and hit like and pass it on to your friends. Thanks, and I'll talk to you guys soon.